volcanoes develop in various structures all over the world that range from small fissures with calm streams of lava to vast mountains home to colossal explosions. While I can't cover everything there is to know in one video, I hope to help visualize the absolutely massive scale of volcanoes. Let's start with the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI for short, the scale which all volcanoes are measured on. Based on how many cubic meters or cubic kilometers of material a volcano ejects, they're classified accordingly and given a number between 0 and 8. A volcano that would register as a VEI 0 would eject less than 1,000 cubic meters of material. These are all effusive or non-explosive eruptions. A VEI 1 will eject more than 1,000 cubic meters, but no more than 1 million cubic meters of material. From this point on, the scale is pretty straightforward, with each category being 10 times larger than the last. A VEI 2 will eject at least 1 million cubic kilometers of material. A 3 will eject at least 10 million. A 4 will eject at least 100 million. A 5 will eject 1 cubic kilometer. A 6 will eject 10 kilometers. A 7 will eject 100. And lastly, an 8 will eject at least 1,000 cubic kilometers of material. We don't actually need a VEI-9, because if an eruption that large were to occur, we would all be dead. Volcanoes aren't just classified by their explosivity, but also their characteristics. The smallest and most gentle are referred to as Hawaiian eruptions. Volcanoes in this category don't have to be in Hawaii. They just get their name because Hawaii has the highest concentration of eruptions that fit these characteristics. Hawaiian eruptions are mostly effusive rather than explosive due to the lava's relatively low viscosity. This means lava flows are able to travel much farther, usually cooling and hardening on the outside while maintaining a molten interior. When lava reaches the sea, its reaction with salt water creates compounds such as hydrochloric acid, among other noxious gases. So, despite how captivating of a site it is, bystanders are advised to keep their distance. The next largest category are Strombolian eruptions. These are the weakest explosive eruptions, which generally have thicker lava than Hawaiian eruptions, making the flow of lava shorter. Since explosive eruptions at this size aren't clouded by large amounts of dust and rock, Strombolian eruptions are some of the most visually impressive volcanoes. Gentle eruptions are caused by the increased thickness in lava, which allows a slight buildup in gas pressure. Only small amounts of gas build up before being released, so these volcanoes usually erupt in intervals ranging from just a few seconds to minutes apart. Even though Strombolian eruptions are small in comparison to other types of explosive volcanoes, they are capable of ejecting lava over 100 meters in the air. Above Strombolian eruptions are Vulcanian eruptions. They're similar in causation, however the eruptive columns of Vulcanian eruptions are much larger, meaning gas is trapped at a greater capacity, and the release of pressure is much more violent. In addition, the vent of these volcanoes is capped, and the pressure needs to reach a certain threshold in order to break through. An eruption in this category can create a plume of smoke from 1 to upwards of 10 kilometers high, and is powerful enough to eject fragments of rock that can be several meters in diameter. Following an initially large explosion, after the cap has been opened, it's likely that several smaller eruptions will take place soon after. Pelian and Plinian eruptions are enormous volcanoes capable of creating a plume of smoke anywhere from 10 to greater than 40 kilometers high. If Vulcanian eruptions are on the scale of large hills and ridges, Pelian eruptions are on the scale of small mountains, and Plinian eruptions on large mountains. The force that makes these volcanoes so violent comes from the compression and decompression of gas within the magma chamber beneath the volcano's vent. An eruption of this size can create a plume of smoke vast enough to temporarily lower a region's climate. Ash clouds generate enough static electricity to create lightning bolts that are miles long. Anything within the direct blast radius is in danger from burning hot tephra, or asphyxiation from breathing in dust and toxic gas. The first atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima exploded with a force of about 15 kilotons of TNT. The Plinian eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980, however, released energy equal to 24 megatons of TNT. 
that's more than eight times the amount of energy released by all explosives set off in World War II combined. It's worth noting most of the energy released from the eruption was in the form of thermal radiation, which doesn't translate directly to the power of the blast. Ultraplanian eruptions come from the largest volcanoes and may occur only once every several hundred years. Depending on the amount of dust and gas ejected into the stratosphere, an ultraplanian eruption is capable of lowering the average global temperature significantly. An eruption that's considered supervolcanic is an ultraplanian eruption that registers as an 8 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index. These eruptions are extremely rare, and usually occur if there's a massive displacement in the Earth's crust, which can cause entire volcanic complexes to erupt. If a magma chamber is large enough, after an eruption takes place and the chamber is emptied, the volcano may collapse in on itself, forming a caldera. Crater Lake, formed about 7700 years ago by an ultraplanian eruption at Mount Mazama, is a perfect example of this. The lake currently has a volume close to 30 cubic kilometers, just a fraction of the size the magma chamber was at the time of the eruption. After the chamber was emptied and the caldera was formed, the peak of Mount Mazama was reduced by about 1,600 meters, nearly a whole mile. I thought it'd be interesting to demonstrate where the largest eruptions in history took place and to rank them by their explosivity. Each point on this map will demonstrate one ultraplanian or supervolcanic eruption at some point in history. Before I start ranking them, I wanted to note that much of the information on these volcanoes isn't indexed well, and some of these values are disputed. That being said, I excluded several eruptions I couldn't find sufficient research on. Here is the Ultraplanian volcano that erupted at Mount Mazama. These next few volcanoes will bring us to the VEI-7 category. Many of the eruptions on this graph happened in the same volcanic complexes, just thousands of years apart. New Zealand in particular has had routine eruptions at this scale for over a million years. Other island countries such as Japan and Indonesia have also been home to some of the largest eruptions. High volcanic activity in the Pacific often occurs at plate boundaries, but hot spots have also created enormous eruptions in the middle of plates. For example, the Midwest and Western regions in the United States have had an extremely high concentration of eruptions registering VEI-7 and 8. Beyond this point, eruptions register as VEI-8 and are considered supervolcanic. All Talpo volcanic zone eruptions occurred in North Island, New Zealand. Yellowstone Plateau eruptions occurred in Blacktail, Idaho, and the Kilgore and Huckleberry Ridge eruptions also took place in Idaho. About 30 million years ago, two massive supervolcanoes erupted in Yemen. Around the same time, there was a flare-up of eruptions in Utah and Nevada. Volcanoes from the Caliente Ignimbrite field took place only several thousand years apart, forming the largest group of super-eruptions ever recorded. Thanks for watching. I'd like to give a shout out to Marcus from the Ogono Art Family for making illustrations of me. It was a great opportunity to work with him, and if you'd like to check out his work, a link to his YouTube channel will be in the description. If you'd like to follow me on other social media, I do have a Twitter, at meta underscore galactic, where I post about videos I'm making or plan to make.